that cut went very nicely. Uh, just a three quarter inch turned out to probably be five eighths uh, finish cut. So I'm gonna drop down another uh, five quarters, but I'll have to move uh, these log clamps down a little bit to get some clearance for the guides. Actually, I think I'm gonna go up five quarters uh, again. So I'll raise the log. And the reason I'm raising the log is just to give a little bit more clearance on this side. I don't have much adjustability here. So the treadmill motor stopped running suddenly and uh, I took it apart and you can see there's one of the brushes there that that looks pretty good. And here's what's left of the other brush. It just got demolished, just worn right away to bits. So that wasn't even making it presenting itself outside of the brush holder. And if you look a little carefully in here, Maybe a little difficult to see, but there is some burning of that plastic shroud where the brush sits. You can see that's what it should look like, and that's what it does look like. All that sparking ate it away. So, not the bridge rectifier, not the controller, it was the sparking. So, I uh, haven't given up on the treadmill motor yet. What I'm going to do is get some new brushes, but look at this. Got a deal on a two horsepower motor. 70 bucks so i'm going to put that on and see what it does that's just straight ac all right i got a new lead put on this motor um, runs out to a, a typical three-prong plug however um, what i'm likely going to do is install this switch along the way uh, i won't know where to put that until i actually get the motor mounted i could because i have this little harbor freight variable speed router control thing. I thought maybe I could use that, but it has absolutely no effect on this particular motor, except I could use the on off switch and it does have a fuse in it. So it might be kind of nice. Maybe run it through there. I have a, a fuse built in. Still toying with that. So that's an option. Just plug the new motor into the base of this and then plug this into the extension cord. So thinking about it, However, the problem I have at the moment is how to mount this. So here's my uh, mounts and I need to get it up here onto the sawmill. And <clears throat> I have to raise it up a little bit. So I'm probably going with this kind of a sandwich, two, three quarter inches and a, and a half inch. So that's gonna give me almost two inches of uh, clearance. Uh, raise it up off the beam about two inches so I can get over the top of the blade here. The motor, uh, the bottom of the motor is pretty much flush with that. So that will give me just about a quarter of an inch clearance off the bottom of the, of the blade guard. So that's okay. But I do need to cut some pieces that'll make a, an appropriate block that I can sit the motor on. So I'm going to do a little bit of fiddling and get this figured out. All right, that is the sandwich that will provide the uh, appropriate height for the motor. So now I'll just mark the holes where I want to put the, uh, the bolts through the motor and through the stand and drill them out. So that's the sandwich, <coughs> our little motor mount block. I got the holes marked, or the, yeah, the holes marked where I'm going to drill them out. Um, but I have three independent pieces and I do want to keep them together for the drilling of the holes. <coughs> um, I could glue it all together and make a solid block, but I don't really think there's a need for that. 
but I do want to keep them together uh, while I drill them out. So I'm going to use my little nailer and just kind of nail these pieces together. Okay, that'll be good for drilling, and then I can remove those uh, nails when I'm when I'm done, if I need to. All right, to the drill press. The bolts that I'm using to hold the motor on are uh, five sixteenths bolts, but I'm going to drill these holes out at three eighths, so there'll be quite a bit of wiggle room. Um, to allow the bolts to slip through and, and give some minor adjustment. Got a nice clean hole going all the way through on both sides, so... All right, let's try uh, setting the motor on the beam. Let's see what happens. First, I got this cord now trapped in the wrong spot. <laughs> it is snug, no doubt of that. But that's gonna work. <clears throat> so the bolts from the motor uh, come down here, one on each side, and I have been using these blocks on here like this. Uh, and then clamping them down. But with the addition of that, you know, the height here, these blocks are now too thick. So I don't wanna cut these down at all because they're just wood. But, I do have some metal, some quarter inch metal. So I'm gonna be using that instead. What I need to do is, uh, Cut it off to the appropriate length and drill one hole. I've got one hole in it already. So I just need to cut these guys off up here somewhere and drill another hole. So. All right, so there's our holes drilled. Just go clean that up a little bit, and I'm gonna give a little bit of a, a sand with the belt sander on these edges just to remove any sharp bits. Okay, so you can see I got one uh, loosely fitted, and just gonna slip the other one on. Being carriage bolts, these do have a square uh, spot on the head of the bolt and that's just it fits in really perfectly into the slot on the motor mount so <clears throat> it's exactly the right bolt to use here Okay, our motor is attached. 
All right, I got excited here and plugged it into the Harbor Freight uh, variable speed controller. Um, I had tested this without any load on it and it worked, although the um, speed control has absolutely zero effect on this induction motor. Uh, so uh, anyway, I, I just tried it again, now fully under load, and it blew the fuse in this. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'll have to wire it up to a different switch, but there's my, oops, there's my blown fuse, little 50. But uh, for now, what I need to do is wire up my alternate switch. This is gonna be my uh, machine safety switch. So I'm gonna put that in my little box. I'll mount that little box up here. So it's kind of right where I want the switch to be anyway. I'll be up there. And uh, yeah, so we'll get that set up and then uh, come back when I'm ready to turn it on again. I may stop for lunch in the meantime. Alrighty, motor mounted. I got uh, wiring kind of put up in place. Runs across the top of the beam. Got a switch installed. We're all plugged in. Ready to see it run. Here we go. So I believe the blade is going much faster than it did with the treadmill motor, which should let us cut logs a little faster. But I'm gonna set the camera up now for our first cut and let's see how it works. So I'm gonna do a cut here in real time. Uh, and I'm just gonna go a little bit uh, to start with um, a couple inches or two or three inches just to see how uh, it cuts. And then I'll take a stop, take a look at how things are holding up. And then we'll take a longer cut. This thing is just ripping, so I'm going to go for a little bit longer cut. I'm going to put you on time lapse, uh, but you'll probably see me uh, fly through this fly through this cut if everything goes well. Okay, that cut went way better than I expected. Uh, I seemed to be able to go through twice as fast. Uh, motor had no issues whatsoever keeping up with the blade, uh, keeping up with the log rather. Um, and we went through just a perfectly straight cut. No drift, nothing. Even the saw marks are minimal on this piece. You can see the odd little uh, score there, but in general, that's the cleanest cut I've had yet. Um, I guess making that blade run that much faster, I think it's almost running twice as fast as it was with the treadmill motor. Wow. Uh, okay. I don't think there's going back to the treadmill motor. That's just phenomenal. Not to say the treadmill motor won't be used. But uh, yeah, upgrading to this motor, this induction, two horsepower induction motor, really seemed to make a huge difference. The one problem I have with this induction motor is I'm gonna lose a little bit of height. So I had, with the treadmill motor, been able to cut, uh, I get 15 inches of clearance between the bottom of the blade and the table. I'm, I've probably lost about uh, three inches there, so I may have 12 inches, 12 and a half inches of clearance which means if I have a very large log on the sawmill, I'd have to take a 
probably a two inch slice off the top of it. Um, but anyway, that's another problem and I can probably find a way to deal with it. But wow, uh, super impressed with that. Now, the question is, will the blades hold up uh, spinning that fast and uh, with that much uh, power behind it? Who knows? The next thing to do is take another slice off this log. So I'm going to flip it over and uh, start going through it the other, the other way. You're not going to have that ready. So that cut went very well. I, I noticed now though that I am, I'm drifting down just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch by the time I get to this end of the log. Um, I'm not gonna try to tackle that right now. I'm just gonna kind of continue going with this. I was pushing the blade a little hard, like it was going about twice as fast as I had with the treadmill. So I think I might slow down just a little bit. But I'm gonna go down another uh, five quarters, make one more cut. This, uh, this motor's looking good. I've been spoiled. All right, set up, make another cut, put you on fast forward. All right, that was a very successful cut. And I did discover uh, going slower made the uh, cut come through here perfect without any drift at all. It occurred to me as I was uh, running the crank there that I have been focusing very hard on trying to be consistent with the speed at which I'm running the crank. However, you may recall, I'll take you down there at the end of this, uh, the crank is made up by uh, this, the rope, kind of coiling around a spool and it'll coil around the spool you know initially I'm on the very bare spool so that's a one inch diameter spool it means every time I turn the crank I'm pulling in you know pi 3.14 about three inches of rope divide that by two that means the blade because I'm going from one one end to the other end over there I'm pulling the blade forward about an inch and a half with every revolution of the crank however then I get onto the second layer of rope on the spool and I am now adding a quarter inch of rope on each side of the spool. The diameter now becomes uh, one and a half inches and for every crank of the handle I'm now moving the blade forward two and a quarter inches and then the next layer up I'm going to move the blade three inches and the next layer up which is the final little bit up here about this far I'm kind of on my uh, last layer of the or the final layer of the spool so I'm pulling the blade three and three quarter inches with every revolution. So more than double the blade travel for the same speed at which I'm moving the handle. So on this uh, round, I was trying to be conscious of that. And the first, first part of the log, I'm moving the handle pretty quick. And then I'm trying to slow down a little bit as I progress down the log as each layer of spool adds up. What I think I'll wind up doing is actually marking the rope so I can, every inch I'll have a little mark on the rope and it'll be easier to gauge how fast that rope is coming through uh, the upright and it might be a better way to gauge the speed of travel. Anyway, that's my little understanding, a revelation that came to me as I was uh, cranking away. Um, this is a perfect nine quarter inch slab and I was gonna make another cut on it, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave this as a nine quarter slab. Again, good material for making legs and the like out of it. But I'll unclamp this and then go over to the table saw and we'll get some dimensional lumber out of this uh, final cedar log. 
So I'll set you up there and come back when I'm ready. And just to illustrate my point about uh, as I'm winding the log, you can see I'm on the first layer on the spool here. So as I wind this along, I'm getting about um, one and a half inches of travel of the blade with every revolution of the handle. And now as I'm making on that second layer, I'm getting about uh, two and a quarter inches of travel with every revolution of the handle. And as I go farther along and wind up on my third layer, now I'm getting about three inches of travel with every revolution of the handle. So a little bit of uh, adjustment to kind of a mindset to get around and have to figure out a mechanism to make that a little bit easier and, and uh, a, a better way to progress the saw. I have to find a way to be consistent in the speed of the cut. So I'm noodling that. Any ideas, uh, leave comments, please. So that's the uh, end result of that log. Got a, about a three and a half inch by one half inch uh, piece of stock. Two boards that are uh, five and a half inches wide and then five quarters thick. And seven inch by nine quarters. So mind you, I do have these holes going through, but still a nice, uh, nice big chunk of cedar that you don't find every day. And the grain on this is going to be quite nice too, so yeah, I think we're going to have some nice, nice material to work with. So I'll take this out to Woodstock and you can see the result of uh, all the log cedar logs we've done so far. So there's the lumber that we just cut from the previous log that's a little wet, so I've got some spacers in there, some stickers to help dry it out. And the log before that and the log before that. This log here is a spruce log, so I'm not going to be milling that up at all. But that's, uh, that's what we got so far. Next couple weeks, I'm going to pick up a few more cedar logs. I'm also going to go to a farm up north and pick up some, uh, some barn wood. So I'm kind of excited about that too. So visit with John, looking forward to it. And see you soon on the next video. Please like and subscribe.